Good morning, and welcome to this morning's devotion for South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church. I'm Linda Mori, and today is June 23rd, 2022. If we're friends on Facebook, most likely you've seen pictures of my new patio. The patio was created from monies left to me by my parents, and it is my new favorite place to be. I can't wait to get up in the morning and have a cup of coffee on my patio. I have a picture of it here so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that. My patio is in the backyard of my house and is easily reached through the man door of the garage. My backyard has always been available to me through the back garage door, but I didn't use the space hardly at all before the new patio. What changed? This is the same area of my backyard as before, but it has been made new. I have lived in my house for 37 years, and the backyard was the backyard. But this space has taken on a whole new look and a whole new use. I relax here, I read here, barbecue here, eat here, and rock paint here. My backyard has been made better because of the new patio. New is good. The Bible has much to say about all things being made new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When someone trusts in God for salvation, the Holy Spirit dwells in him and he becomes a new creation. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. As believers, we are no longer bound by sin. We become new creations, able to please God and live in his ways. Galatians 2.20 sums up our newness well. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. No longer do we live for ourselves, but we live for the one who is life. And John 1, 3 to 4 says, A transformation occurs in those who surrender to God. And of them it can also be said, Behold, I make all things new. According to gotquestions.org, decay, destruction, death, and evil are all part of our lives on this earth. Even nature groans to be delivered from the curse. Romans 8.22 says, We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. But this sinful, depraved world is not God's ultimate destiny for those who trust in him. And we, like Paul, long for the time when God will bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth and under Christ. In the book of Revelation in the Bible, God gives us a glimpse of the rest of the story. All things are made new. God's new creation is better because of what we won't experience anymore. Death, mourning, crying, pain, deception, and shame. We read from Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling is God with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Revelation tells us that eternity is better because of what we will experience. The new creation is a place full of energy. Heaven is pictured as a city that is not up there, but coming down here. In Revelation 21, John describes a vision of the new heaven and new earth. He sees the city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. In the world as John knew it, 
the people could go to the temple in Jerusalem to be with God. But in this vision, the city comes down out of heaven to be with the people. John describes the city as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. The city was radiant, looking beautiful for the sake of celebration and love. Reverend Rebecca Hayes says, As all of this sounds nice, but the best part comes when John hears what it means. A voice tells him that the coming of this beautiful city means that God will now live with his people. Because of the presence of God in the new heaven and earth, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. God will restore his creation to complete wholeness and peace. When you face death or mourning or crying or pain in your life today, take courage. These are things that are very difficult. They are not forever. God will make all things new. Most important, God will be there with us. For all who follow Jesus and trust in him, nothing could possibly be better. We don't simply long for a reunion with loved ones or for an eternal vacation, but for the opportunity to live forever in the presence of our Creator and Redeemer. Jesus' declaration, Behold, I make all things new, offers, affords, off, affords the hope that one day we will be free from the consequences and effects of sin and will live with him in the new heaven and earth. This truth makes us live with eager anticipation, seeking to know him more, become more like him, and make him known. Our hopeful future is what changes how we live as we await Jesus making all things new. While my new patio is a beautiful new creation in my backyard, it pales in comparison to what waits for us when God makes all things new. And in Christ, we can be included in that process. Follow him and live in the joy of God's new creation. Let us pray. God of all creation and eternity, let me glimpse your finished work. Give us courage to face the unknown future. Give us trust that we may know that you will make all things new. Fill our hearts with excitement as we see your new creation. And in your grace, make us too new in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that you have a glorious day.